so yeah let's let's make a start and I'm just going to show you what I use to make this one but as Danny's sort of you know pretty fantastic my box kit arrived yesterday so I'm going to be using the new box kit papers on today's card and um, if it hadn't have arrived I would have used what I've used on here because these papers the Christmas romance have been some of my absolute favorite papers that Lisa's bought out I love this set um, I just wish I'd got more of them but so I've used the, the actually that paper as my one design paper and the other design paper is one of the snowflake pages and um, they come in in different colors so i've used those and then as my decoration i used the layered snowflakes from i think possibly last christmas we have so much and it comes so quickly that i forget how far back it is but i think these were last last christmas and I also used the nested scallops and stitched rectangles to put a piece on the back to put my sentiment on. And you can see here I've just stenciled the very large snowflake from this year's snowflake dies. Um, and I showed you this, I'd cut this into card some time ago. So I've used it a couple of times now, but I just I didn't want that to be plain on the back. So I just added um, just a little bit of stenciling. and you can write over the top of that. So that's what I've used for that one but as I say because my box kit arrived I'm using the new box kit papers because they're just so beautiful <clears throat> so I'm using this this one this dotty one which is a sort of a really um, dusky pink which is really really subtle and I've teamed it with this one here because I just think those two go together because of the pink on here. I think they just go together really, really well. And then I thought I didn't want to use snowflakes again because I've used snowflakes on that one. So I thought I would use some of the stickers on here. But I've used my sentiment from the Christmas is coming sticker sentiment that Lisa bought out a while back. And um, because obviously it all goes together. Um, and I've just used it in white. And I've matted and layered it onto the same colour card that the, my base card is in. Okay. So let's go through the pieces that you're going to need. Now I've already done my scoring, but I will go through what lines you need to score. Okay. So your base card is going to be 7 by 10. Okay. You're making a 5 by 7 card roughly. All right. I'm sure you can adapt it for whatever size card you need to make. Okay. OK, so my base card is um, 7 by 10. This is Lisa's textured card and um, the multicoloured pack. And this is the grey. It's sort of um, it's almost a, a buff sort of grey. It's, it's not a not a true grey and it's just a really lovely colour. So you're going to score that at two and a half and five. OK, and what you're going to do is fold that over. Just get my furniture and then fold this front piece where you've scored at two and a half, fold it back on itself like so. Okay, so that's the base of your card. Okay, so that's that's this bit. Okay, and then everything else just sort of adds on top. It is it is really easy. So that's my base card, and then the other pieces of card that I'm going to use. This is my um nested stitched rectangle that I've used for the back and I've also cut the next one down to to use for my sentiment you know where you would write your greeting on the back of your card that's the only place really that you can that you can write your sentiment okay so that's my nested rectangle and that's that's going to go on the back here okay so I'll do that in a second so that that's out of the way then you're going to need a piece of card which is three inches by four inches and I'm sorry I've only put inches today I haven't gone through and done the centimeters and um, because I'm lazy basically so sorry and you will score that at one inch two inches and three inches so each of those is one inch wide okay and then you'll just fold and score all in the same direction on that piece of card make sure that when you um, score them that you line them up so that your piece of card is is level all the way across okay 
Now, when you fold this, this is this is going to form your your piece in the middle here. So your your bridge sort of thing. So this is your mechanism, right? And the way you're going to adhere it to your card is by folding the two flaps in, sticking one down and then sticking this one down. Now you can see here, actually this one isn't too bad. It doesn't it doesn't really meet. But what I am going to do is I'm just going to trim off a very 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 thin sliver on this side. It's not going to make any difference to how it works and you're not going to be able to see it. But what you don't want is those two pieces to catch. See, so now it's not catching at all and that's what I want. So your piece of card is three by four, scored at one inch all the way across, so one, two and three, and then just trim off if it catches. You might get away with it, you might not catch. But if it does, just trim off a tiny, tiny piece. I mean, these are the pieces I've trimmed off here. So you can see how much I've actually trimmed off. These are, my, these are the pieces I've trimmed off. I mean, it should all be in one line, but it isn't. So you can see how much I've taken off. Not very much at all. It's not going to make any difference to how the mechanism works. Okay? It just means it will work without making a noise. So that's your mechanism. And then for your triangles... You're going to need three pieces, one which measures three by three inches and two which measure two and a half by two and a half inches. OK, so on top of those, you're going to need a white card. So your first piece of white card is going to form your mat and layer for this piece here. So that's going to go in there and that should be four and three quarters by six and three quarters. OK, and then you're going to need two pieces which are going to form your mat and layers for these pieces here. And they should measure two and a quarter by six and three quarters. And then these are your mat and layers for your diamonds. So your first one is for your large diamond, which is two and three quarter inches square. And then these two are for your smaller diamonds and they are two and a quarter inches square. OK. So that's your white card for your mat and layering. And then you're going to need your designer papers. Now, you're using two different ones, purely and simply so that it, it stands out, really. If you want to do it in all the same paper, I'm, I'm sure it won't make any difference. It's just that when you use two different ones, it just makes the card look a little bit more interesting, to my mind. OK, so your first piece is four and five eighths by six and five eighths and that's going to go on there and then these two pieces so one of your designer paper one and one of your designer paper two is two and an eighth by six and five eighths and those are going on your two white matte layers and then your diamonds your larger one is two and five eighths squared and your two smaller ones are two and one eighth inch squared okay i know i've gone through those quite quickly but if you want to just watch it back later slow it down stop it you'll be able to write them all down quite easily all right so first off let's put the back on and get that out of the way so i'm going to put the back on here like so and i suppose looking at it now i could have used the scalloped rectangle and done that in white so that it sort of stood out from this but I'm not bothered I actually I don't think it makes any difference to be honest it's no good me using that glue it's empty so I'll just put this down first and then we that's out of the way and done with okay so this bit's the dead easy bit put this on the back job done and then when you write your greeting or whatever you can write over the top of those snowflakes it's not going to make any difference because they're only there as a little bit of interest in the background okay so let's mat and layer our card pieces and our designer paper so let's put the designer paper on first and again 
I was going to do all this and glue them all down and have it all ready, but I thought, no, let's just let's just do it um, in real time. It's not going to be enough. Let's do it in real time, and then you can see just how quick and easy it comes together because it really doesn't take very long at all. It's so much less complicated than Mondays. <laughs> So Janet, you should have one. If I finish this at quarter to two, you should have yours done by quarter past, I reckon. Okay. So I'm just going to pop that down there. And you can see it's only a small mat and layer, which is perfect. And then that's going to go on there. I'll put these down in a second. I just want to put all these, all these on first and get them all done. So then these two narrow pieces are for the front and again you don't need to go overboard with the glue it's Lisa's glue and it will stick anything to anything trust me so again small mat and layer absolutely perfect you don't really need much of a layer at all because it will detract from the, the card I think Okay, so that's that one. We'll do the next one. Okay, so that's those two. And then we can put our diamonds together. So we'll do the large one first. And then I can put my papers down. Now don't do what I did and cut the wrong designer paper because <laughs> I thought, I put it all together and I thought, well that's not right, it doesn't look right. That's because I've cut the wrong designer paper. So now I've got some diamonds ready to use for another card. <laughs> Already made. <coughs> Never mind, eh? It's only paper. It is beautiful paper, though. And the quality is just stunning. Um, and we'll just have a look in a second. What the GSM is, because... I just think it's it's just a fabulous quality. 200 GSM. Now that is a, a really good weight for sort of um, paper stock. You know, it says card stock. It, it, it's sort of, it's card but it's paper, but it's paper but it's card. Do you know what I mean? It's oh, stunning, stunning. Now you see what I mean about the colours going together? I think... Lisa has just hit the nail on the head with this kit. It's just perfect. So, just put these together. It doesn't take very long at all. And you can see that the mat and layer for the um, designer paper onto the white is very small. And then the mat and layer for the um, cardstock is a little bit bigger. And that's to match the mat and layer on your base card because the mat and layer on the base card is a little bit bigger. So it all sort of fits beautifully. So then we'll just add our papers down and then that's all our matting and layering done. So all then we've got to do is fit our diamonds where we want them to go on that card. And again, it's a little bit fiddly, but it's worth spending a little bit of time to work it out so that your it, it all sits beautifully. So those are all my diamonds done and my layers. So let's put our layers down on our base card and then we can look at putting the front diamonds down and then the mechanism. The mechanism and the big diamond are the last two things you'll put down. Okay. And I picked grey. I, I actually wanted to use um, a sort of um, an olivey green um, paper, uh, cardstock, as my base card. But I, I didn't have the, the actual green that I wanted. I got plenty of green, but not the green I was looking for. So I thought, okay change it completely and go with a completely different colour um, which was what I did so when you're adding these down to your card base 
make sure you try and line them up so that they all follow on nicely and then they won't look uneven when somebody stands the card up when you've you've sent it okay so there's your base of your card right now all you've got to do is fit your diamonds where they need to go now this is where it gets a little bit fiddly now put your front diamonds on first and then put your mechanism in afterwards okay right so your diamonds are going to go on the line of your two and a half inch fold okay um and that's that's how you would line them up so the way i'm going to do it you're only going to glue half of it because otherwise it'll stick down to both sides of your card and it won't open properly so what i would do is i would just draw a tiny pencil mark this side of this crease line okay if you want to you can join those pencil lines together because you don't want to glue past those pencil lines okay and do the same with the other one put your diamond down on your card on that line so your points are actually matching that two and a half inch um, score line put your pencil lines on join them up and then what you're going to do is you're going to add your glue onto this side so that when you turn it over it's going to glue onto this piece okay so because you only want to go up to that line that's why you would draw the pencil line i didn't on the first one i just did my two pencil marks and guessed and i was okay but to be on the safe side i would say join your pencil lines up because then you're not going to go wrong and you're not going to go over the edge with the glue because once you've gone over the edge with the glue your card's not going to open properly so i'm sorry if you can see the top of my head but i just need to line that up properly so make sure it's lined up on your crease line so that's the first one and again do the same with the second one make sure you're putting the glue on the right side and then add it down to your card and so long as your glue doesn't go over the edge then you're not going to glue it in the wrong place now it's going to be easier to line this one up because you've got a point here to line it up to already okay doesn't matter if they overlap just adds to the effect okay so that's your first part See, it looks great already doesn't it <clears throat> okay so that's the first bit now you've got to put your mechanism in all right now i know i've written on here but hopefully i will cover it all up yes i should do so what i would do okay, you want to make sure that this piece which is your mechanism for your this this diamond coming across is in the middle of these two because that way you know that when you put this diamond onto your mechanism it's going to sit in the middle of those two diamonds which is where you want it okay what i would do is i would line your mechanism part along the fold line so at your five inch score line so in the middle of the card okay lift that up and then add your glue down now it looks a bit fiddly but honestly I found this the easiest way so make sure that that's still on your score line and then fold that over and stick that side down okay okay so then you're going to do exactly the same with the other side now you know this one's going to be in the right place because your other one's already glued down so this is just a case of securing this piece down all right so keep it folded in and then make sure you don't glue it on top of those diamonds and just stick it down okay just give it a little a couple of seconds just to make sure that that glue has adhered properly glue on my fingers now and then it will pop up like that 
okay so that's your mechanism for your other diamond now then to make sure that this diamond doesn't sit proud of the edge of your card you're going to need to trim some of it off okay now i did this and then trimmed it further but this worked for me so you just need to find your way of making sure that it sits right okay so what you want to do is close your card sit your diamond oh look your diamond actually sits inside the card it didn't yesterday see this one here this one actually sat outside the card edge okay so i had to trim the edge of this diamond off but if you look carefully it just looks like it's folded over and um, so it doesn't it doesn't really doesn't really make any difference um but it it actually sits inside the edge of that card which is what i want this to do but without trimming this off it looks as though this is going to do it anyway so all i need to do is sit this and i'm going to line it up like that and just move it across and all you need to do is just make sure that you've got the same distance here to what you've got here all right so you're eyeballing it basically there's no point sitting and using a ruler and trying to work it out because it's just it, it's just not it's just not worth it and yes Lorraine you're right which is what I did with this one I had to trim the left hand side um, but for some reason on this one um, I haven't got to so I'm not I'm not actually sure why but I mean I'm not bothered makes life easier because it just actually sits right on the inside of the card so i'm actually I'm chuffed to bits of that but yes on occasions you might need to trim this side the way you would do it if that sits like that you don't want that okay so what i would do is flip it over draw a pencil line and then cut that off so that when you turn it round and you put it this side, your straight edge is going to sit alongside there, like this one does. So you can see here, I've got a straight edge down here, and that's going to sit along that edge. Now, if you wanted to decorate this piece of card with one or other of your designer papers, you can do. I, I really didn't think it was worth it, because um, I just think it all, it all fits together really nicely. So, you know, I, I don't think it's worth it. But it's entirely up to you so you do what you what you want that makes you happy so i'm just gonna make sure i can line this up and then glue it down so i'm actually only gluing and make sure i do it right i'm only gluing to here I'm only actually gluing that last little bit there. Okay. And it will be enough to hold it, honestly. So making sure that it sits between those, bring it across and just glue it down just to that one side. You don't need to glue it to both because it won't work if you do. So that you see now i've done it properly it does sit proud what i'm going to do is i'm just going to trim off try and make sure you get it straight that piece there if it sits just inside i don't mind might have trimmed a little bit much off there no i think that's fine that looks okay doesn't it just make sure that my i've got enough glue left on here okay so now when you close it your diamond shape won't sit outside your card this one's better because i haven't taken quite as much off however if it sits inside all your paper line and you're happy with that then don't worry about it 
it's some all you want is to make sure it doesn't overflow the edge here okay so that's my basic card okay so then i just need to decorate it and i thought i would use the stickers from the box kit because i can and these are just these are just stunning and again the quality is just brilliant now all i've got to do is make sure i'm happy with how i'm lining it up what which way i want it do i want it that way or do i want it that way that way i think so that's going on my largest diamond so i'm using two more of the stickers on the smaller diamonds now you could 3d these if you wanted to but again because it's got dimension to the card in the first place you might struggle to actually get um get it into a, a five by seven envelope so i would i would stick with um just sticking them straight to your card and then as i say i used one of the sticker sentiments and i've matted and layered it onto the same color card that i've done my base in and i'm just going to put it on the front here okay and then just stick it directly between those two diamonds like so okay isn't that gorgeous it's just such a different look to a card and it's it's so easy it really is um i would i would probably say always trim a piece off this side so that your largest diamond never sits proud of your card edge okay how much you trim off will decide where it sits so on this one i've trimmed a little bit more and it sits within my my designer papers on this one i trimmed a little bit less you can see if you compare the two you can see that this piece here is actually i've cut a lot less than i have on this piece so that makes a difference to where the diamond ends okay i think i actually prefer this one i think i prefer it that it sits within that designer paper but it doesn't matter either way they're, they're just they're just such clever cards um so yeah so there's my two cards i hope you enjoyed that and i can't wait to see your makes in the group either with the new box kit papers or papers you've already got in your stash obviously preferably lisa horton pa uh, papers um but providing you've got loads of lisa horton product on there they'll be absolutely fine so take care of yourselves and each other and i'll see you very soon bye now mm -hmm.